Selection number three. This cart racer was the result of a rare marriage of three powerhouse type entities. It features six initially playable characters, plus four unlockable, and items like soda pop for speed boosts. Hmm. This action RPG saw the combination of two unlikely franchises, and it worked. Quite well, in fact. It was the first in its series and was among the top-selling software within two months of release, causing it to be a major boon for the industry that holiday season. It has spawned a number of sequels and re-releases over many home and handheld platforms. Any guesses? This game features an organic heads-up display and puts players in the role of reality TV show contestants. It has seen releases on the PC, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, various handheld mobile platforms, plus was recently added to the OnLive roster. Despite a Metacritic score in the 80s, the sequel was cancelled and the series will more than likely never be heard from again. What game is it?
Selection number six. This movie tie-in property features third-person action sequences, RPG elements, and even some racing segments to mix things up a bit. It was critically received in a middling fashion, much of which cites nostalgia as not being able to chiefly carry the game. Can you guess the answer? Alright, that's six pixel tracks, so I ask, what do they all have in common? What ties them together? While you mull that over, I have yet another topic to get off of my chest. So I took about 20 minutes the other day making a list of games I want to purchase this fall season. In retrospect, it might not have been the greatest of ideas as reality sunk me even further into depression. <laughs> That's when I decided to tally up the bill, including coupons and or game credits, and let me tell you, it's uh, really not that much better. The season only recently kicked off with the release of Deus Ex Human Revolution. I'll be honest, I had little interest in the game until a week or so prior to its shipping. All of the videos I watched showed really nifty stealth elements, and I knew I loved Metal Gear Solid, so I assumed it to be a third-person character action game. Let's just say the first strike against it was due to my own ignorance in getting it home and coming to find out that it's... Wait for it. Another goddamned FPS. There's so much time and effort into fleshing out Adam Jensen's character visually, and it's kind of a pity that you'll only stare at a firearm model for most of the game, I'm assuming. I am, however, loving the soundtrack. It, it has this extremely Blade Runner-y feel to it. And, you know, for the most part, the, the voice acting is solid so far, but I'm beginning to see that a red shirt is, well, still a red shirt in more than just appearance only. Also, I'm noticing a bit of inconsistency in either the gain or the volume of each vocal sound clip, as they seem to be just a bit uneven. But, like I said, I'm, I'm loving the third-person cover mechanics, but why can I only rotate my camera 180 degrees around Jensen before the view pops back into first person for the other half of the rotation? Ugh. I'm thinking scores in the nines are a bit too much for Deus Ex. It, it seems to be fairly well built for the most part, but it still doesn't come close to the Portal sequel earlier in the year for me. Well, in a few weeks, I'll be playing Resistance 3 in all of its 3D glory. I'm just not sure what quantity of said glory that'll be yet. <laughs> I mean, hopefully it's a fun multiplayer co-op romp. I'm seriously thinking about skipping the God of War and Eco collections for now and picking them up later, but 
with a $20 discount, I'll be paying about the same no matter when I purchase them. So, I don't know. That's still up in the air. I do know one thing, though. The games I'll be nabbing day one will be the Nintendo ones. Their software almost never drops in price, so I'll take the retail assistance while I can get it. I'm not too sure about Star Fox, though. I, Man, I, I can't remember having to make this tough decisions in September. I mean, let alone, I guess, October, too, but maybe not for me, but for others. There are just too many games to name here. November, though, that's going to be the month that owns my ass. <laughs> Uncharted 3 literally releases on my wedding anniversary, and that's not good. <laughs> it's not good at all. The first day of that month seems to be the least of my worries, though. The, you know, Then there's Skyrim, Super Mario 3D Land, Assassin's Creed Revelation, Skyward Sword, and even Kid Icarus Uprising. Man, November. Ugh. So, my bill of wants, and actually I'd like to refer to them as needs, come to a whopping 440 bucks. And I mean, maybe for some that's not as much as it would seem, but for me that's a pretty good chunk. And that's with retail discounts. I didn't even add Gears 3 and Forza 4 because, like I said, decisions have to be made. I'm just lucky that I can't stand unnamed military shooters and GTA-type games. I do feel, though, at this price, I've whittled down the list about as close to the bone as I can. What about you? Are any of you making difficult calls about your fall 2011 gaming budget? Leave a comment on the Season 2 Episode 5 show post, and please, let me know that I'm not alone. That will about do it for this episode of Pixel Tracks. Remember to submit your answers promptly to the Pixel Track Show at gmail.com. Don't fret if you miss a show. Someone above you on the leaderboards could possibly do the same, and not only that, but a correct guess as to the theme of each set list would go a good way to helping you catch up. Check the rankings at thegamesman.com and please share the show with a few of your friends. Don't forget to join us next week for a fresh episode of The Gamesman and let us know what you're playing on Twitter by using hashtag TheGamesmanCheck. If you have comments, feel free to leave them about this or any other show on the site. Until next time, good luck and take care. If not fully satisfied with this podcast, please return any portion for a full refund. So you can run and tell that, homeboy.